Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say podcast. This is a very top secret. We're coming at you from the Conspiracy Bunker, the Red Pill Tamale Studio, brought to you by Handyworks, the app. It's like Uber for handyman. Sass. You know, get in, touch, get in touch with a handyman. Yo, we got producer Rob in the building, man. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? I am wired. I'm ready to fuck some shit up. I was listening to Metallica. I had some afternoon coffee, and now fuck I got yeah. a beer. What kind of coffee you got? Uh, it's pumpkin spice. <laughs> I'm motherfucking ready. I stopped at the gun store. Got some more ammo. <laughs> pumpkin spice. Hey, I'm sipping red wine, brother. So, hey, man. So, uh, I had me some Vietnamese iced coffee earlier. So I had to take it easy. Oh, me. yeah. You can't have any more after you have Vietnamese coffee. Yeah, and it had the little jellies in it, too. So. Just basically caffeine pills. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So today we want to um, talk about... Actually, first off, first, yeah, first and foremost, Patreon. Everybody that signed up over mm. the weekend, we've had a, a half a dozen or so people that signed up. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. You can just search Red Pill Tamales on Patreon. We appreciate you guys that signed up. So we have, we're probably going to do two episodes this week and then the final two next week. And it's up to you guys basically to go sign up, show your support, comment on the thank you note that we have up there that uh, some of you have written very, very nice comments on. Awesome. And uh, we'll keep this train rolling. So I want to just remind everybody to make search. Sh- uh, make sure you send me that link uh, or I'll find it and I'll spread it around because it seems like we tapped into some very passionate people. Yeah. Um, for every closed minded person that's like, fuck you, puto. What are your sources? You know, Biden's for La Raza. You fucking sell out coconut. Uh, for every one of those people. Man, we have like 10 open-minded, positive, you know what I mean? Yeah. Red-blooded Americans. It's yeah. true. It's true. Uh, that chair, you want to turn it that way? I got the light Which shining way? off it. Just that way. Away. Perfect. Sass. Sass. So uh, I, I texted Rob today. I said, hey, man, I think one of the things we need to really tackle on this Red Pill Tamale is because this is episode number nah, uh, eight or nine. Nine. It's nine. So we have 10, 11, 12 left on this season and uh thanks to the patrons that are signing up uh we're gonna keep it going so uh obviously if you're a patron you're gonna get all the episodes including the secret bonus episodes everyone else you know all the freebie folk they get every other right Mm -hmm. that's right so one thing i really want to um i told rob i want to attack is just kind of showing folks what a low information voter is meaning if you only get your info from jorge ramos and even angoria tweets or something. <laughs> I love how we've been picking on the same group of well, people, but it's true. Well, the reason I say Evil and Gory is because I'm not trying to go, you know what I mean? I'm, I don't want people to be like, oh, he's picking on other Latino comedians. Or, mm-hmm. Chingo just wants clout. Whatever. Uh, I'm good. You know, I got the same kind of wigs the Selena series got. So, I mean, <laughs> obviously, shit. Obviously, we got Netflix budget over here. That's right. We'll talk about that later. And, and of course, we're going to read some Tupac quotes and, and all kinds of shit. But I told Rob, I said, hey, man, we really have to attack this idea that the news is reliable and credible. Um, I feel that w- that's the first red pill. The first baby red pill that we all first got to kind of like, it's like you're not ready to talk about simulation theory and all this other crazy shit uh, where it just gets deeper. It's a whole bunch of rabbit holes. But the first one is maybe think about us next time you watch the news and just kind of peep, okay, how much opinion did Don Lemon add to that? Or, hey, did Tucker Carlson leave out some context? Or, hey, is that considered fake news against Biden? Um, so I want to talk about some fake news. I want us to debunk the bleach hoax. Uh, and should we do that first and then talk about the fake news they're doing on Biden? Uh, no, let's jump into that first. Cause, okay. Yeah, go for it. So some examples of fake news. Because on- earlier you just mentioned Tucker, right? So Chingo mentioned both sides. It's not just one side yeah. that could potentially do this. It's everybody. Yeah, because comments that I get are... Uh, all, all the Trumpies are mad at Fox News and they're going to Newsmax now. And, and I'm like, what the fuck is a Trumpy? <laughs> I'm like, maybe because I call motherfuckers lefties. <laughs> I mean, shit, if you a lefty, embrace it. Just be, hey, fuck it. You yeah. know, if you were, you know, you know what a lefty is. Like, they against guns and they he, she, she, he, she, them, they. Right. We, uh, socialist, communist, lefties. Right. Liberal as fuck. You know, like AMLO, the Mexican uh, president that's like pro- Maduro and shit, pro Chavez, pro Cuba, pro Venezuela, like a motherfucker. So keep an eye on him. All right. So some of the stuff that that I feel could be considered fake news ish on Biden is, for example, when he said, um, you know, if me and Kamala have a disagreement, I'll develop a disease and resign. And of course, you could look at that and be like, oh, shit, Freudian slip. Like, man, he's letting y'all know straight up he's about to pass the baton to uh, to Kamala and. 
you know, he's ready to, you know, which I believe I, I, I'm one of those folks that thinks like, man, he ain't really planning on sticking around that long. Yeah. I don't know. I'm if, with you. I'm on that same train too. If, if he ends up being the uh, actual president elect or the winner, actual, thank you, Mr. President elect. That just sounds so retarded when they call him. That. <laughs> thank you, President, Mr. President elect. If he ends up being the guy in the office, you know, because he ain't moved in yet, he got them U-Haul trucks right outside waiting. Um, you know, he's gonna get hit. Most of the fake news is gonna start coming from Fox News. You know, right now, it's eighty percent CNN doing all the fake news. It's gonna shift to like Fox News is gonna be like, all right. You got this dude in the house. All right, he's a human gaff machine. He's always saying weird stuff. He fucking stutters, mumbles, whatever. Like he, he's losing it. Uh, we don't know if it's uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, some type of uh, cognitive thing when, you're, you know, when you get older. Uh, you know, it's sad. It's unfortunate. It is. And you can actually go see how many times he's had uh, brain surgeries. Like, he's had open skull surgery, basically, in the past. And, you know, good. He's alive. He's not dead. Nobody's wishing death upon anybody. But at the same time, you might think to yourself, could that be a reason why he's so fucking dementia? Why did he have so many uh, brain surgeries? Uh, he had a couple of issues. I can't remember exactly. I actually look it up while you're talking. Mm. But, you know, they were they were procedures that needed to be done to basically save the man's life. Oh, wow. And, you know, he didn't stop trucking. Like, he kept fucking around in p- politics and yeah, yeah, he became one of the laughing stocks of the, the whole thing. But whatever. He put in 47 years. Motherfuckers want 47 more. Yeah, so, uh, so one example is when he said that when he was like, uh, you know, I might develop a disease and resign. It's like, okay, we can all make a huge deal out of it. You know, go all out and be like, man, this is a Freudian slip. What the fuck? That's their plan. Or he knew that's kind of what the joke is. He knew that's what people were thinking, and he was trying to be funny. So let's just say it's a 50-50 chance, right? Yeah. So that that could arguably be a thing that uh, people could put a whole bunch of spin on it, and then everybody on the right. That's why you got to be real careful about picking teams and, and, and stuff like that, which um, Matthew McConaughey went viral. Oh, yeah, it was Russell Brand. Yeah, I, I haven't heard it, but supposedly he was just critiquing both the, you know, the left and the right and saying he's in the center and all this bullshit. That's a very convenient way. Oh, to, I love it. Yeah, convenient yeah. Convenient way to stay out of shit. Still I get love. T- get attention, trend, talk shit about both sides, and Dude. be like, I'm middle as fuck. I love these fence sitters. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I would, I mean, I would say that myself included, you tend to want to try to be that guy so that you don't upset anybody because genuinely Chingo and I are good humans. We're good people. We're not at there out there trying to push anything in anybody's face or change your minds about anything. We're just trying to inform people, have good conversations and yet someone's still going to get triggered as fuck. Right. Mm-hmm. But the people that are just outright fence sitters, Oh, they're just, they're, I mean, some might call them spineless, but you mm. know, they're just never going to poke I'm, anybody, man. I'm new to this. I, I didn't know what the fuck a fence sitter was. <laughs> But a, a couple other quick examples of uh, Biden stuff getting twisted up. Um, obviously, he did sniff a whole bunch of hair, and you got a whole bunch of other sketchy shit. Those compilations they do with the music and shit, too, are really <laughs> creepy. Yeah, they're weird, especially with the kids and stuff. Um, so some other stuff is uh, when he told Charlemagne, if you don't know who you want to vote for, then you ain't black. Yeah. Arguably, you know, some, pe- some people might be like, man, see, that's racist. But you could argue like, okay, this is towards the end of the interview. He knew it was a friendly thing. You know, he knew Charlemagne was like already kind of on the left. And, and and by then they kind of hit it off. And he again, maybe he was just trying to be funny. Mm-hmm. He's trying to be slick Joe, you know, funny Joe. Um, so it's up to you how much weight you want to put on the, uh, you ain't black. And even the Despacito thing. Maybe it was just one of those things. I, I know it's pandering. Yeah. I know it's pandering like a motherfucker, and I think he knew what he was trying to do. But at the same time, he's probably worried about, I got to read this teleprompter, and they're telling me last minute, hey, look, we're going to put this song on your phone. Basically, it's the people around him, yeah. too, that are like, hey, you probably don't know this song or whatever, but the Despacito guy, is he, you know, he was nice enough to come be a part of this, and just press play. Don't fuck up. Make, you know, keep the speaker on. You know your passcode, Joe? If the screen goes blank, I, 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 okay, we take the code off for you, Joe. And, you know, it was lame as fuck. You know, a lot of people fell for it. Like, oh, Despacito, oh, my God, the left, they're so inclusive. Yes. I, I forget the name of the guy that even sings the fucking song. But um, shout, yeah, out, sure, sh- shout out to Daddy Yankee, though. I know he's on there. I forget the other guy. Luis Fonsi or somebody. Or... Got me. Sepa la madre. <laughs> um, fuck it. You could be a one hit wonder if your hit is that big. That's true. They were playing that shit in Italy. They were playing that shit everywhere. Uh, what's some other thing I was going to say uh, about Biden? 
that was like could be considered like kind of fake news ish. Oh, what well, you mean when he says, "Ah, oh, uh, son of a bitch," the prosecutor was fired when he remember. Yeah, I don't know. You think that was fake news? Uh, no, no. I'm that was accurate as fuck. But people would say like, I can't believe he said that out loud. You know, yeah, which is true. He's a human gaff machine. Yeah. So there's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff. So the thing about the, it was at Georgia where they had the votes up under the table and they told all the uh, the witness people, all right, we're done, go home for the night. Mm -hmm. And then they pulled out these suitcases and then they kept counting. And obviously, everybody on the right heard about how there were these anomalies these spikes right. like how did all this like at five in the morning you get two hundred thousand votes get counted and how are they damn near all for biden but i've heard it kind of debunked to where they kind of said okay well what if i told you that and again what i'm telling you is so that you can put on the filter and look at the media differently. Look at the mainstream media differently, whether it is from the right or from the left, whether it's Fox News or CNN. And basically, I heard a debunk to where it's like, what if I told you that, that those are the cases that ballots are kept in? They weren't like the TJ Maxx luggage, carry-on luggage. It, it was like, that's what they, because they're heavy, and it's a lot of them, that's what they put them in. When you're in a room full of tables, where do you store stuff? Like anybody that's done catering will tell you, like, oh, shit like that, you got to put under the table. OK, and the part about go home, you know, I don't remember that part of the debunk, but basically it's like it's possible that there was nothing really sketchy about that particular video. That doesn't mean that there wasn't a huge incentive for uh, uh, fraud, cheating, a whole bunch of little cheating. Um, and it's possible that 95 percent of all these little court cases, you know, the cracking, you know, where Giuliani. <laughs> Giuliani's running around to all these different state legislators. It's possible that maybe 95% of that ain't really enough to turn for the state to be like, okay, this is a lot of votes and this is a lot of fraud and we're going to go ahead and revert, like let's say it's Arizona. Like, okay, I know we flipped blue, but uh, we need to go ahead and do a whole recount type of thing. Um, you know, but I think it's, I think it's, I think it's very unrealistic to think that there was no cheating. And one of the red pills we got to take is we have to acknowledge that chances are there's been cheating for a long time. <laughs> Even though the news will say, again, the fake news will say, this is the purest, cleanest election, even though they're using some weird fucking software that no one's allowed to look at. It's the purest, non-cheating, I don't want to hear it, blah, 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 no cheating. D d d take your L. And it's like, mm, yeah. You have to wonder, right? Like that's, and basically what you're saying here is what a lot of people that are really, really smart and follow this, you know, day in, day, night, all day long will say it's very unlikely that any of this is going to turn around, that we're going to see that second term. And it's pro more than likely going to be probably Joe Biden who takes the office, right? But at the same time, there are a lot of these anomalies and we're starting to see more and more of them. And as you talk about the, uh, the suitcases and all that, there are a couple of these good journalists that have done videos on this already. I haven't dove in, I haven't dove into them yet, but maybe we can do that. And then on the next episode, mm -hmm. talk more about the debunking of the yeah. debunking and see what actually transpired. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you have to do that and you're you're giving these people the information and like slightly easing them into maybe taking half of a red pill right mm -hmm. and just opening your mind to the possibility just, right just lick the pill yeah just just, just lick it one time the just, red pill let it dissolve on your tongue yeah yeah lick the tip of it whatever whatever you're into you know shit whatever however you want to do it it doesn't just matter the, just the tip of the pill god by the way he did have he had a brain surgery to uh fix some nerve damage uh, and then a, an aneurysm wow so you know, yeah, I, I'm sure Trump ain't like the healthiest motherfucker in the world either. But I mean, you know, like I posted today the ch the clip about, you know, China. And I was listening today from uh, what's his name? Ed Calderon. He was on a podcast, uh, Sean Ryan podcast. And he was saying because this dude knows the ins and outs of how the cartels work because he was like a, a special force cop going in kicking doors and cartel doors like shutting off the water so they couldn't flush dope and, and Sean Ryan's a former U.S. Navy SEAL right yeah so I mean it was these guys know what the fuck they're talking about yeah like my daughter asked me I was telling her I was like did you just hear that <laughs> I was like this dude just said ain't no fentanyl coming out of China going into Mexico um without the the Chinese government somehow knowing and being involved in it she was like, well, how do you know, like, who is this person? How do you know they're telling the truth? Like, well, you know, how are they credible? And I was like, good question. I was like, well, 
he may or may not be right. But this dude was boots on the ground, knew the ins and outs of the cells of cartels. He was saying that the um, the new generation cartel out of Jalisco, that they're the only cartel that grew during the pandemic. And his hypothesis is that they had a mainline source of fentanyl from China. So they never skipped a beat. Like they just pivoted and grew and expanded during a pandemic, whereas everybody else was like, okay, it's a lockdown. How do we sell dope? So the, they're the Amazon of the drug game right now. Yes. Just fucking growing and scaling. Yeah, yeah. And um, and he was saying that El Chapo, he's like, he's like, oh, American news media, they try to make him out to be the head dog. He's like, nah, he was maybe number three or number four. And I'm like, what? Mind blown. God damn. But, um, you know, anyway, I, what I was saying is I posted the clip about uh, you and I talking about... um why china should be a big concern oh, to right. people and the comments are hilarious some people are Dude. Like, shut the fuck up go fucking suck trompas nuts already let me get this straight you voted that way or you're conservative because of china yeah they 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 do they have <laughs> i'm telling you man we gotta like spoon feed people so they could catch up you gotta they, give them that gerber red pill just <laughs> fucking ease it into their mouth just let some dissolve on your tongue <laughs> just take half a tamal no and the reason that's why i told you rob i was like bro i feel like step one is just showing how the mainstream media is not that reliable and we shouldn't put that much weight. We shouldn't put that much weight in the, in the opinions that they're assigning people and how they're spinning people. I mean, putting spin on it. And we're going to dive into the bleach one because I feel that 90% of the reasons people can't stand Trump is because of the hoaxes. And I'll ask them too. They're like, how could, how dare you could have, you know, da 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 da, turn your back on your raza, da da da. Then I'm like, okay, just name me one thing or a couple things why you don't like Trump. And of course, it's like all hoaxes. Mm -hmm. He called Nazis fine people. He told people to drink bleach. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> if only Biden had kept it real and said, hey, America, I don't agree with this guy. I'm going to be the better choice. I got 47 years of experience. I made some mistakes. I apologize. I don't really like sniffing hair that much no more. Don't worry about Hunter's <laughs> laptop. You know, don't worry about the deals I got with China and Ukraine and all this. If he would have said, but at the same time, he did not call Nazis fine people. The media needs to chill out with some of that shit. Dude. It similarly, similarly to the last debate when towards the end of it, uh, Trump was like, look, answering whatever question was, look, it's not my fault. It's not Joe's fault. It's China's fault. Right. And Joe's face was like. Well, he's like, oh, shit, he's like kind of giving me credit right now. And he was like, and the, the reaction to that gift that it turned into was hilarious. Because had he done that, you're right, to anything in the past, instead of actually regurgitating that shit over and over again, this, this guy said to drink bleach. We'll play it in a second. Bleach never even got brought up. But Dude, the, my, my point about it is that, okay, maybe I'm asking too much for him to have said. It feels like we're asking for too much. Yeah, he it's asking for too much. But instead, what did he do, Rob? Biden based his entire campaign on he called Nazis fine people and the and the and the veins bulging and and they had the tiki torch and they were coming out the bushes and they and they're going to put you back in chains and like all this I get it both sides use fear you know one side is saying hey they trying to turn us into Venezuela and take your guns away and da, 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 da. and it's like maybe arguably I don't know and you know cuz everyone from the left is like bro show me one thing Biden has done that's socialist or whatever right but to base your entire campaign on a hoax only because America's full of low information voters, they believe the news, and they really believe the part where he said there were fine people on both sides, and then they cut him off when he said, and I'm not talking about the Nazis, I'm talking about there were a lot of people there protesting against the removal of statues that had nothing to do with tiki torches or, or whatever the fuck, KKKs and shit. Right. He based his whole campaign on that shit. It's like a it's like a department store that runs like an ad or an advertisement or a campaign where you know damn well, and this is just marketing one oh one and there's stories on the way JC Penny approached it years and years ago where they would just reduce the prices and you know, put the uh, the the markup within the sales price or whatever, whatever and it's just scarcity and urgency, right? It's just this fear, like, you're going to miss out on this if you don't act now. It's kind of similar to what he was doing in the sense of you, you got you to gotta vote, mail everything in, make sure that you don't, you know, get this fucking racist and xenophobe and blah, blah, blah maniac who's telling you to drink bleach back into the office. It's it's really like surface level, rudimentary kind of like approach to it all. There's no policy. I didn't hear about shit the entire campaign. No, no all they had to do was paint Trump as orange man Hitler 
Which he didn't do himself some favors, let's be honest, yeah. on the news or on Twitter, but still. Exactly. And people ask me all the time, Ching, are you ever going to say something bad about Trump? It's like, yeah. And they're like, do you disagree with anything Trump does? I'm like, yeah, I don't agree with 100% of, the, of how he does things and why he does things and the shit he says and how he says it and all that. You know, but at the same time, it's like, y'all didn't even pay attention to all the good shit he was doing how he was trying to help the economy. They're like, he downplayed the virus. It's like, can I show you why it might be a good time and a good reason to downplay a fucking virus? I mean, the economy, the stock market, uh, people not going crazy, people not wanting to hoard PPE, people wanting to hoard toilet paper. Um, fucking, you know, you don't want to have some martial law type of situation. And as it was, Antifa was acting a fool because you had the George Floyd situation. It was so many things layered on top. And on top of that, they're like, and because of this, you got to mail in your ballots. And then Trump is like, uh, that's going to be a problem down the road. I'm just telling everybody right now. They're like, shut the fuck up, orange man, Cheeto man, pinche trompas. He's like, okay, I'm just telling y'all. It ain't even just because it's me. It's just because America and we have to have faith in this election. And it's some third world country type shit. And you just nailed what the entire thing really is about. Like we've said several times, it's not necessarily that Trump has to win and get back into office. It's about the actual legitimacy of this entire fucking election. So check this out. How many FBI investigators went to the NASCAR garage to, <laughs> to, see, to see if there was a noose? Right. It might have, I forget, 11, 17. It was <clears throat> FBI. Dude. FBI was like this. Be like, uh, hey, man, I heard they found a noose over there. What's his name? Bubba? Uh, Bubba the NASCAR. Wallace. Bubba Wallace. A noose? 2020? NASCAR. Hold on, man. Hey, man. Let's get down there. Load the jet. Get the jet ready. Come on. We investigating. They're like, okay, it was a rope from the from the garage pool. Oh, like, yeah, they they have one on sense. all of them. Yeah, yeah, and, they do, huh? Okay, cool. How many FBI? Juicy, juicy Smollier? Yeah, ju- juicy, juicy Smollier. <laughs> How many FBI? Went to investigate this uh, voter stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Crickets. I mean, why would they? Because they were the ones investigating <clears throat> Trump for four years. Yeah, and again, that sounds all conspiratorial if you've never looked into what Obama had done as far as spying on the campaign. and Some how... people have no idea what we're talking no, about. No, they don't. And I, you know, <laughs> I know we sound like a bunch of retards we're talking so to fucked. ourselves we're right so, now. Yeah, we're so fucked. But at the same time, so many people are coming over that do know what's going on, right? And they are having a hard time. Or not, not that they're having a hard time, but they're trying to like also slow feed these tamales to their friends or family, whatever. And a lot of people have said like, how do we how do we make this, you know, uh, digestible for our parents or whatever? It's because they believe the news. Right, it is. And, and I almost, I'm at the point, I don't know where you are with this where you, you you can't one change everybody's mind as we all know and as we can see on social media but our parents if they're in their 60s plus you know it's like why why stress them the fuck out you know at this point it's it's our duty now to make sure that this society doesn't fucking crumble how many more votes do a lot of our parents or grandparents have if we even have grandparents well my dad understands socialism so i was able to kind of give him the red pill to uh he he thought that the republicans were the socialists <clears throat> he had his shit backwards so he was already anti-socialist, but he was like, no, pinche Trump, socialist. I was like, papa, <laughs> los, los republicanos, like, you know, they've been accused of a lot of shit, but never socialist. I was like, they're accused of being greedy, uh, only wanting to help the rich and, and the corporations and not worrying about. But guess what? Newsflash, Trump and the Republicans have become the party of the working class man. People that are like, I just want to work hard and have my guns and my freedom and don't lock me down and so on and so forth. You know, liberty, America. Liberty, cons- yeah, life and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, basic shit you would think everybody wants. And and the Democrats are the ones that are like a lot of yuppie, elite, coastal elite, big money donors, uh, big tech. I mean, people that call me conspiracy dope and they think fucking Chingo, he's on... What they say I was smoking, I was smoking some kind of drug or something. I, I'm cuckoo, right? But it's like, okay, bro, um, are you aware of, of how big tech leans? And are you aware that, I mean, just bouncing around, like, are you aware that if you play for the NBA, you can't say nothing bad about China? 
Like, does that not strike you as odd at all? None of this shit is like, oh, there's some fucking influence. And you had mentioned this in the last episode. Um, there's a term for it, and actually in one of these articles I was reading where, and it's similar to confirmation bias. Mm. It's a similar term, and I think you had mentioned something along the lines of it. But there are people, basically, what it roots to is that they really do believe, it's like the people that are saying it on the news, they believe their own shit, they believe their own, like, whatever message they're putting out there, they genuinely believe oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that that is accurate, right? And it's like, you can't fault people for having that perspective, but it's like, it, it, maybe you talk to a friend or family member that you just, you have a, a basic question for them. Like, do you believe that it's probably better that we open up the economy and then just, you know, react accordingly, right? With who gets sick and who doesn't. And they'll completely say, no, shut it down. Keep it shut. And then you don't see it that way. And it's a very, very simple, but you just, you can't really reason almost with a person like that. And the reason is, is a how many, how many people are experts on economics. That's really the biggest <clears throat> thing. Like a lot of folks don't, I'm not even an expert on economics, but I'm, I listen to stuff and I research and I, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm asking people, what's a good book about economics? <clears throat> even if you watch some Thomas Sowell, uh, clips on YouTube, even for starters, right? Uh, baby red pill to mine. And, um, uh, Oh, economics, right? Yeah. So, People don't understand that, like, okay, before we even get into the data and the science of lockdowns and, and cases versus mortality rate and how many people are actually dying, and comp you know what I'm saying? Before you even talk about that, it's like, can we at least have the argument that the economy, without a strong economy, you ain't got nothing. You have no defense, no military defense. You have no economy. You can't educate your youth. I mean, people can't work. People can't feed themselves. It's like... What what good is your country without a strong economy? There's a really good little uh, Prager U. And again, and actually, we'll do. I, I want to do like a whole segment on Prager and why everybody from the left thinks it's the fucking the devil in, of information. Uh, I, I used to be one of those people. <laughs> okay, look, well, look, good. Look, so look at this put, shit. I'm yeah. on YouTube and this fucking ad pops up. <laughs> Get this fascist shit out you of here. You can do. You can do some really good commentary on it then. But they, I, I watched last night. It was like, uh, it's called Fleeing California. I think it was, mm -hmm. and it was why they're fleeing to Texas, right? And mm -hmm. Senator. Tenor, Senator Cruz was a big part of this little little short or whatever. But to what you just said, California, even though they have all the big tech giants there, Twitter, Facebook, Google, so on and so forth, small businesses make up the majority still of everything that funds California. Come like on. jobs and em yeah. em employment, yep. everything. Taxes, everything, right? It, it's And still people just don't want to kind of uh, see that. But I wanted to bring up this clip before we get into the Trump right, thing or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you see the the CNBC little feud that they had on air? Um, speaking of, since we're talking about the economy, it was Rick, San Rick Santelli and uh, Andrew Sorkin. They were talking about the coronavirus and opening small businesses versus big box businesses. Dude, check oh, this out. Oh, play it. Did you play it? Okay, okay. I'm going to play it. And uh, if you haven't seen it, now I can turn the computer because last time I had the wrong cable on the wrong side. But uh, let's get into it real quick. We're gonna queue it up here. I, I, just as a, as a as a public health and public service announcement uh, for the audience, the difference wait, between wait, a big box this? retailer. Who is this? Hold on. The difference between <clears throat> the oh, Andrew. Who else? The different. Who the it's difference Andrew. Between a who big else? box retailer. Hold on. The difference between a big box retailer and a restaurant, or frankly, even a a church, are so different. It's unbelievable. Going I disagree. Into a big box retailer, I disagree. You're wear I disagree. You're wearing you can a mask. have your thoughts and I you're can have mine. You're required to wear a mask. I disagree. I, it's science. I'm sorry. It's science. If it's you're wearing a mask, science. it's a different story. 500 people at a Lowe's aren't any safer than 150 people in a restaurant that holds 600. I don't believe it. Sorry. Don't believe okay. it. And I you're, live in an area don't... where there's a lot of restaurants that have fought back and they don't have any problems. And they're open. Okay. You don't have to believe it. But let me just say this. You're doing a I disservice to I the won't. viewer because the viewers need to you understand it. You are doing it. a disservice we, we are to the viewer. Here. You are. You are. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If, 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 I, I, I would like to keep our viewers as healthy as humanly possible. The idea of packing people into yeah. restaurants I think our viewers are smart enough to make part of those Best decisions on their own. Different I don't things. think that I'm much smarter different than all the viewers like some people do. Can I get mm. in here, please? So... <sighs> Man, okay. What do you make of what, that? What is this host's name? Uh, the guy on the left. So Andrew Sorkin was the guy that was debating. Uh, not debating, but just kind of came at Rick San. So Rick Santelli, he's a he's been with CNBC since '99. He's a contributor working mostly on the Chicago trade floor, 
Uh, and the other guy is the co-host also of the show. It's like the Morning Squawk, I think. On so CNBC. they're both like talking heads. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're both on the left. Yeah. No shit. They're, they both work for CNBC. But the other, the guy that was like yelling, yeah. was like sounded conservative though. He did right, but it, again, th- and this is you'll see this too on on you know mostly on the left where they're disagreeing right now about especially when you're talking about people that work with business or economists almost, and it's like, mm. guys, some of you guys are taking this way too far because you might have some experience with economy or business. You know, might have been an author like uh, Andrew Sorkin. He's written a book, you know, books or whatever. But then the real, real experts were like, you're fucking up the world basically right now. And that was live on air. That was live on TV. So let's just keep in mind, folks. Most wars are economic. So we're kind of in a war right now. You feel me? And those that argue, follow the science, shut everything down. You might be a pawn in a larger war. In other words, if you're quick, if you're quick to yell at your uh, fellow American and be like, no, 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 no. And fellow colleague. Yeah, fuck your restaurant, fuck your tiendita, fuck whatever business you have. Um, we got to keep people safe. You know, that whole extreme thing, you might be a pawn in a larger economic war. For example, when rappers try to battle, no, we already battling. You, you feel me? It's like, no, 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 the, the battle is on. Whether you know or not, the battle is on. It's economic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's economic. We are we are battling whether you know it or not. But anyway, I, that's neither here nor there. Uh, that's just a message for whoever, you know what I'm saying? Whoever was trying to battle, we battling already. Yeah. That reminds me of Charlemagne. I mean, he's, Charlemagne's super fucking left. But uh, anyway, so yeah. cool. He, a long time ago, had said something like, if you can't, uh, basically, like, there's ever any controversy or anything comes up or something goes viral and you're in the limelight or whatever and you don't basically, like, eat for a month, you're not using that to the best, you know, to your benefit and that's basically what you're supposed to do and that's what all these people are doing like don't get it twisted like it's happening right now with the podcast we're like yeah you want to come at the show like that you want to come at you like that like we're gonna eat for fucking weeks or months based off of the stupidity of other people right now yeah like if, if you look at my instagram i mean i could post a skit i could post a family related thing i could post like whatever and it'll be like oh okay uh, did all right yeah. moderate yeah moderate okay uh, i guess people don't like that kind of thing man the minute i talk about any of this type of shit oh boom 305 comments out the fucking blue out the wazoo and people fighting all in the comment section and shit but uh but anyway back to this dude um there's so many people the people that call me sell out coconut they're so quick to be like the virus is everywhere we need to be afraid of it uh, like I went on 97.9 The Box on the IG Live. I meant, yeah, I was meant to ask And uh, shout out to G-Man for letting me, uh, you know, come on there and shit. That's the homie. Known him for years. And obviously he's not a Trump supporter. Sure. So some of the questions he was asking me is like, so Chingo, I mean, I know a lot of Trump people, man. Like they don't believe in COVID. And, you know, like Trump made fun of Biden for wearing a mask. And then two days later he caught it. Do you believe in COVID? And I'm just like, all right, bro. First of all, uh, my condolences. You know what I mean? I lost people too. Yes, I believe it's real. And it's a stereotype that all Republican, conservative, Trump people, whatever, motherfuckers that's on the right, uh, don't believe in COVID. It's this dumb, made-up stereotype yeah. just because we're a little bit more like, okay, how about if, if you got diabetes, you're over a certain age, you're obese, you have like some other stuff going on, you just beat cancer, like your immune system ain't on point. Maybe lay low, take extra precautions. Maybe don't go nowhere. You know what I mean? Like, like Rick just said, let them make their own decisions. Yeah, because it's not the government's job to tell us, no, 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 no. You're Rob. You're not allowed to take any risks, Rob. And it's like, whoa! I thought that's what life was about. Like, I'm taking a risk, especially in America. Yeah, and, and and like if I'm a if I'm a choose to not take a risk, okay, that's on me. I'm not gonna let the government mandate me to not take a risk. So, obviously, I mean, I have my stance. So when I see these two guys going at it, I'm way on the side of the guy yelling, saying, "Motherfucker, what sense does it make? Like, we're allowed. We we can Walmart be packed. Oh yeah. Have you been to a Walmart lately? Unfortunately, I, I was. Me too. I was at the studio and I had to go get a hard drive when I finished up Versace Mariachi. I had to get oh, all my. now. It's out now. Stream it. Even though uh, I'm only gonna get a sliver of a penny every time you stream it. But thank you anyway. Uh, chingobling.com to get the merch and the autograph copy. But I had to run to Walmart. Man, it was like packed. 
And I'm thinking, okay, it don't look very pandemic. <laughs> but, you know, in other states, you know, Illinois, places like that, man, have you ever had a torta estilo Lori Lightfoot? <laughs> <laughs> a torta, si ordenas una torta estilo Lori Lightfoot, or una torta Governor Newsom, una torta estilo, compa, me la da una torta, deme por favor una torta, pero deme la estilo Governor Newsom. What is it, shit and bread? It's regular. Oh. It's a regular torta, okay. but you get eat, eat it at your house. <laughs> you got to eat it inside at your house. And, and motherfucker, put your mask on in between bites. Ain't that some retarded ass shit? So Bloomberg on this video, actually, this because this video happened, I think it was, uh, I want to say it was today or yesterday. Uh, anyway, this Bloomberg opinion article came out this morning where Rick Santelli and the dangers of flaunting COVID-19 facts. And it's just a huge, you know, diss on his approach of like just trying to say, look, it's silly. It's dumb. It's stupid. It's not science. People need to open their business. We're trying to be, you know, basically he's being pro-America right here. He's trying to give people the option to do whatever the fuck they think they need to do to keep their lives rolling. And a lot of the uh, the verbiage in here is just like, you know, and like a frat boy, he crosses his arms above his chest and pouts his lips like an upset, you know, child or whatever. I was like, oh, my God. You know, like, how is that any beneficial to this entire so conversation? Who, wait, who is that? And what are they what are they saying? Uh, this is uh, who wrote this? This is uh, Timothy O'Brien. And what are they what are they saying? Uh, why? Why you can't just say stuff like Rick was saying on air. The dangers of saying things like things should be restaurants should be oh, open and businesses should be open. So basically they're critiquing. Oh, yeah. They're, hey, Rick, don't say Hey, man, open up these fucking restaurants. Yeah. Like, dude, for everybody listening, if you don't live in California, you may not be up on some of their rules. But, bro, you're not even like I tell my daughter, we went to eat at a eat some like little Cuban food and stuff at a El Rey Taqueria after church. Shout out to Second Baptist. And we went and had lunch with uh, some some of the friends from the church. So we went over there. We ate inside. And then on the way out, you know, they have tables and stuff out there, too, like sidewalk type of eating. And I told my daughter, I was like, you know, they can't do that in California. I was like, not even that. Not even sitting outside in the sun, which kills viruses. Right. You can't do that. <laughs> and uh, it just makes no sense. I mean, I mean, I get it. Some of the restaurants out there, they can still do takeout or maybe they, they still do delivery, stuff like that. So it's not completely dead. But Governor Newsom. Have you seen that lady that uh, made that video that's going viral where she's like, they just put the movie set, you know, Man. right next to my outside dining. If you guys haven't seen it. Science, Jingo. Science. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, maybe we can put it on the What Did He Said page. Uh, I had it on my story for a little while. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it on my post, on my thing. But um, basically, it was a lady. She got emotional towards the end because you just feel the frustration. She had all her, you know, like most small business entrepreneurs, they have a lot vested in their business. And um, she owned a restaurant. She said, I jumped through every hoop, every little rule they had out there, you know, everything spaced. I'm having, you know, plexiglass, doing all this shit, right? They keep changing up their compliance. And she's like, I even set up for patio dining, for outdoor. She's like, but now that's not allowed. She's like, I come to work today, 50 feet away from my outdoor patio dining, which is not allowed to be open, they have outdoor patio dining for a, a movie production. Mm -hmm. So anytime you sh you're filming a movie, commercial, uh, film, anything like that, obviously uh, everyone, all the light people, the makeup people, the actors, the director, everyone has to take a food break, and they usually have like catering. So obviously to keep everyone safe on the movie movie production, they had outdoor patio seating with the catering. So Mayor Garcetti from L.A., or, or some department of that big bureaucracy said it's okay for this movie production to, you know, feed their people outside under this canopy. Whereas this lady 50 feet away can't make money selling food. Marisol had a great idea. She's like, why couldn't they have merged to where it was congruent? She was providing the food for them? To where she got hired to cater 50 feet away for yeah. the... And I was like, I don't know, so maybe they already had a production company... Um, Oh, somebody had a contract? Yeah, go figure, right? <laughs> Did what? I get jumped? Okay, look. Uh, my sister sent me a text. Uh, she uh, A screenshot of a text. She said, hey, my mom just called me, and she said she heard something that your brother got jumped. Is that true? If so, is he okay? She said it was over him coming out about voting for Trump. 
And then my sister texts back, uh, nah, he's strapped at all times. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't jumping shit. <laughs> Shout out to my sister, Pat. God. She said, uh, she said, uh, I know it's not true, but anyway, just letting you know, this is what, mm. again, yeah. again, Hey man, Rob, I don't know how to be uninteresting. I mean, this is the only thing people want to talk about. And I happen to be in the middle of it. Versace Mariachi out right now. Somebody left a very funny comment. Um, <laughs> I had to screenshot it. <laughs> this dude is so this dude is so smart. He said, "This is in the the post that had 305 comments." He says, "You guys took the bait. He's promoting his podcast, album, his brand, etc." And I was like, "And getting rid of closed-minded fans, expanding my fan base, all while being educational and informative." Yeah. Well, it's entertaining, really. I mean, it is. If and me, if, <laughs> if you ask me, this is A1 entertainment. Not everyone's going to see that, but that's kind of the beauty of uh, of just, you know, people in general. Yeah. You're going to be able to just navigate through people like that all over the world and all over social media. Meanwhile, the ones that are about it are going to come to you if yeah. you're about it. And they have been. Um, yeah. So anyway, I wanted to bring this up just because we started talking about the economy and whatever. And uh, I found it interesting. I thought it was cool and hilarious that they did it on live TV. And the other guy looked like an idiot because he was just like, you know, you have to watch the video if you want to look it up, guys. It's uh, CNBC, you know, co-anchors or whatever argue live on air. And um, yeah, so let's get into the Trump hoax. OK, the bleach. Yeah, the bleach Drinking thing. Bleach. So how do you want to how do you want to set this up? Because it's about time we actually play this video. Okay. So I'll set it up real quick. All right. So as I was saying earlier, from what I've gathered from feedback, a lot of times when people say they can't stand Trump and his crazy antics and they feel that he's like doing a bad job, he sucks as president. When people feel that way, a lot of times if they're low information voters and if they believe the news, let's say CNN, then they're going to believe a lot of people, smart people, people that I know, believe that Trump actually said y'all need to drink bleach or fabuloso or cloro or pine saw or something people really believe that so i'm here to let y'all know we're gonna finally we're gonna debunk it because i feel like that's the first little baby red pill which is if you're gonna hate the man hate him for some shit he actually said or did not some alleged uh hoax fake news shit out of context so we're gonna go ahead and play yeah, this is a clip from the uh, the initial. It was one of the initial like uh, briefings or press conferences. It was like you know the coronavirus presser or whatever. And this was he came on stage after somebody from the Department of Homeland Security was talking about uh, what was going on and how they were trying to handle it or whatever. Did they hold on real quick? Did they mention anything about the UV light treatment or is that something that maybe he was briefed on before even going up in that room? He touches on it on this one, but uh, you know it came up a few times. Okay, so because the presser itself is like an hour and a half long. This is only like a minute. Yeah, no, no, they, they, they grabbed that little piece of him saying, I don't know, maybe like it can be in, inserted and injected into the body. It can disinfect, blah, 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 blah. They're talking about UV light treatment. UV light kills viruses as it is. There's already studies and a lot of therapeutics that use UV light. And I guess maybe they were briefing him about how they can um, put some kind of the thing, anytime they do the trachea thing, yeah. they can just, I don't know, put a UV light bulb on that bitch. And they're finding that they can kill Corona that way. So he was riffing about it and he used weird language like disinfect and insert to the body. And CNN decided to be like, bleach, Clorox, drink, inject. Which none of those things are, <laughs> every, but anyway. He didn't say none of that. And I'm surprised I could even find this minute clip because a lot of the ones, like you said, were 25 second, 20 second clips of just like the middle of it. And what you have to also understand with anybody that posts anything online when it comes to media is that go find the video and look for the 30 seconds prior and 30 seconds after that clip to get more of the actual context because that's where the context always is. If we say anything right now during the podcast, if you go 30 minutes or 30 seconds before or after, you're going to get the context of what we actually said. So let's just play it real quick. Mm -hmm. So, supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that has not been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll get the right, folks who could. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. One minute, 
And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. But the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's uh, that's pretty powerful. So that did we hear anything about drinking bleach? No. If you were at your house that night watching that COVID-19 press briefing, you would have been like, okay, oh, he said something about this uh, inject, UV light. Oh, okay, I don't know what the fuck that was. And then you'd just go on about your day. Yeah, like, but everybody that's spouting the, the, the drink bleach, all these, this, uh, basically what turned into the hoax are the reasons we need labels, warning labels on the stuff. So, so check this out. Uh, Michael Berry, you know, the big homie. Yeah. Big bro. Yeah. Michael yeah. Michael Berry said on one of his episodes, he said this. He says, remember when ESPN came about? It was an entire 24-hour news thing all about sports. He's like, that's when you started hearing about, you know, stuff of like these dudes and what they do off the court and having to make bigger deals out of smaller stuff. Like somebody went vegan or somebody got injured or somebody, whatever. Like they just have to fill up more time now remember you know i'm old enough to remember when you know the, the gulf war you know whatever they called it you know with bush and desert storm and you had a uh, cnn and c-span and and they were like they had cameras out there you started seeing this coverage you uh, you're probably too young right i am yeah seeing like the the nuke what mm-hmm. are they called i'm sorry scud mm. scud missiles so oh let's speak of the devil michael barry yeah, you got to remember, guys, Shingo's about 10 and some change years older than I am. 10 and some change, <laughs> god damn. So anyway, here's the point. Let me just get to the point. The point is this. These news stations, they got to make money. They got a lot of overhead. They need to clickbait you. They need to create stories. They need to make profit. They need to sell ads. So it had to be somebody's job to raise their hand and be like, hey, um, could you rewind that part real quick? What did he say? Uh, something about UV light. Da, da, da. Man, could we? Hmm, cut that part out right there. Okay, let's play it again. Uh-huh. Disinfect, disinfectant, lungs. Does it does a number on the lungs? One minute, it kills it in one minute. Okay, cut that cut that part right there. Play it again. Disinfect, lungs, inject. Disinfect. You, you might need a doctor. Inject. Okay, yeah, let's uh, get Don Lemon in here, get Chris Cuomo. And as a matter of fact, we're going to queue up a few seconds from each of these videos from different outlets that did just that, Chingo. Let's see what and, they said. And they're going to milk it. They're yeah. going to turn it in. Just like, just like these little Chicano podcast pages or Instagram pages that want to take it, parse out little things of what I said and be like, um, uh, Chingo Bling denounces his raza. Chingo Bling, whatever the fuck. And they have to milk it and for clout. So look at all this shit as clout. Dale. CBS, starting with CBS News here. Well, today the governor of Maryland had to warn citizens to not ingest or inject disinfectants into their bodies. This came after the state received more than 100 calls to its emergency hotline asking for guidance. And to be clear, that is dangerous. The warning came after President Trump suggested scientists look into disinfectants as a treatment, a way to internally cleanse the body. CBS's okay, so that was CBS. Again, spin like a motherfucker, right? Okay, here we got uh, Inside Stunned Edition. Reaction today to the president's jaw-dropping suggestions on how to combat COVID-19. I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside? It may sound crazy, but obviously people Even take Fox News. the president's words seriously. It was just the most bizarre thing I've ever MSNBC. heard. MSNBC. The look on Dr. Deborah Burks's face yeah, says it all. She's one of the world's foremost experts on infectious diseases. A lot of people felt for Dr. Burks as she looked like she was trying to hold her face on straight. Ly- even, oh yeah, Lysol and then even Lysol. Lysol. Issuing a statement. We must be clear that under no circumstance should our disinfectant <laughs> be administered into the human body. She's trying to get that. Lysol inject- issued a statement. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> trying to get them marketing dollars for free. Uh, here's one more. Fuck it. What does this guy say? President Trump is making some potentially dangerous new suggestions for fighting the coronavirus. At his latest briefing, he talked about possibly injecting disinfectant into people's bodies. Though he later partially walked that back. The president also floated the idea of getting bright light like UV rays into the body. 
after hearing it's bad for the virus. Now, this is not the first time he's pushed treatments without his medical team's endorsement. Wei Zhejiang is at the White House. <laughs> it's very unfortunate because although although he's not a doctor and he shouldn't have, he shouldn't. Sure. Have, he he basically gave them the rope so they could hang him. Yeah, so he does that a lot. Yeah, and I do too. I do too. Don't you think there's parts of this yeah, that yeah. people can? I mean, I'm running the risk. I'm giving them more fodder. Mm -hmm. I'm giving them more shit for them to take out of context. But it's okay because the minute you do, I'm gonna drop five more episodes on your ass, and they all gonna be an hour plus long. So you over here playing around with this five seconds? People got five hours to go look at. Yeah, at least fifteen hours at this point. And so I know I talk a lot. So uh, one time we were at dinner for uh, it was actually Mighty Soul's birthday, along with uh, I think it was one of her aunts. They, had, they like kind of birthday around the same time, so it was like a Governor Newsom party. It was so many of us in that section, <laughs> but this is Texas, yeah. And uh, Marvin, he uh, her uncle, he busted out his little mobile UV light. And he he's funny. He's like the jokester of the family. So he's like. Hitting it. I'm like, Marv, let me get let me get some. I put my hand out. He hits the light. I say, he's like, oh, get you some more, man. Come on. I'm like, yeah. And he's hitting the table with it. He's hitting the chairs. Like, he's he's being funny. But everyone's like, Marvin, what are you doing? He's like, no, this really kills COVID and all other viruses. And I was like, yeah. And no one heard of it. No one believed it. But I guarantee you, they heard the, the drink bleach hoax. But they never heard that if you go outside and if you go outside in the sun, not only are you getting vitamin D, which played a big role in the mortality rates of this COVID. And why do you think African-Americans got hit so hard? Because they suffer from low vitamin D levels, you know, only because darker pigment, more melanin, you're going to absorb less because you just it's like natural SPF. Yeah, people think it's the other way around, actually. Again, mistaken. They get less vitamin D. So. Unfortunately, Trump was doing his COVID thing. I think after that, he was like, all right, well, fuck y'all. I'm not going to do – I'm just going to send Pence and Attorney Gen um, Surgeon General and Fauci. Fuck it. Y'all go out there. Uh, Kaylee McEnany, y'all mm -hmm. go do the shit because you see what the fuck happens when I go out there and try to talk these big science words. Unfortunately, they just try to make a piñata out of him. Yeah. They just tried to, like, make him the joke of the thing. While people are dying – while he's trying to, what he was trying to do is let y'all know, help is on the way. They're working on treatments. If you heard everything he was saying about the UV light and how the shit was working, he's like, and you're, and you're going to test that as well. He kept looking at Dr. Burks, and you're going to test that as well. And then he says, now you may need a medical doctor for some of these things, but we're working on it. You know, but you're testing that as well. A tremendous job on the lugs. Locks it out in a minute. <laughs> Knocks it, kills it, disinfects in a minute. He was trying to give you hope and give you an update about shit they're working on for fucking COVID. And what does the news do? The enemy of the people. Instead of saying, hey, guys, that was the president. He uh, he was talking about some stuff that they're working on. And, you know, you know, y'all stay safe. No. They like even Lysol had to present. Even Chlor Fabuloso had to issue a statement saying our products are not. Of course. They're getting PR out of it. Hell yeah. If you got a disinfectant company and you didn't come out with a statement around that time, that's your bad. And they all finished. You played yourself. They all, but dude, how much money was made off of the clickbait and advertising? How much website traffic uh, was generated from all these little bullshit blogs and websites and YouTube? All these CNBC people, they all got, this is all YouTube. Like, yeah. they're making money. NBC. Fox News, CNN, Newsmax, Ben Shapiro, me. Everybody is cashing in on talking about this shit. It's just that some are going to lead you astray and some are going to say, hey, guys, let's think of a more productive way to approach all this stuff. Like, how can you decipher some of this information better? We're talking about things like context. You know what I'm saying? And spin and 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 uh, cognitive bias and, and all that type of shit. But... Yeah, just like meanwhile at the at the last uh, conference or whatever that Giuliani was uh, fucking just made fun of for his dye that was, you know, dripping on the side of his head, mm, his hair coloring. Mm, like mm, out mm. of everything that was said at that hearing or at that presser, that's all they focused on was just like it's like the fly thing. It was just like, oh, you look like a fucking whatever with a hair dye dripping off the side of his face. Nothing else was mentioned about the important parts. That's how it is, bro. Even uh, Lalo Alcaraz, he drew a little comic 
Uh, he gets so many shout outs on this show. I know, right? I mean, hey, man, take advantage, bro, because, I mean, you know, let's get your followers up. Um, he's an OG. I think his heart is in the right place. You know, I respect his stuff. But, I mean, it's a new, it's 2020, bro. Yeah. Uh, we're not doing chancla jokes no more. <laughs> the chancla shit, like, ah, throwing a chancla. Y- you know, he helped out on Coco. Uh-uh. That's why Coco had a chancla joke in oh. it. But, you know, I'm from the Latino comedy scene. We don't do chancla jokes no more. But anyway, he drew Giuliani with the uh, the little, the dye mm. sweat. And it's like, okay, that's cute. It's funny. Let's pick fun at, at the right. Let's pick fun of Trump. Pick, you know, make fun of uh, Giuliani. Anybody that's associated with Trump, they're all fascist, evil. They want to put kids in cages. They want to do hysterectomies on people. And, and, and they want you to drink bleach. And it's like, like you just said. So instead of, we're not being very productive. You know, it's just fodder. It's just clickbait. We're not saying, hey, guys, Giuliani's out here arguing on behalf of Trump to try to investigate. He's trying to, like, look into, like, can we look into the shit? Like, the same people that go went and looked into Juicy Smollier, Juicy Smollier, because remember, y'all, it was the mainstream media that told you Juicy Smollier got bleach thrown on him and he was a, a, a victim of a hate crime. Like, this is the same that mainstream media. But guys wearing MAGA hats. <sighs> that it, was, it was some big Nigerian dudes. That's who it was. He hired some big Nigerian. Yeah, there were his trainers. His partners. Yeah. His Nigerian homies. Hey, man, put on this MAGA hat. Go, where do I get the MAGA hat? So funny. Dude. And who is going to pay for this? Living who is going to pay for in this? In a goddamn Black Mirror episode is what we're doing. It's a combination of Black Mirror episode with a South Park episode mixed in there. Yeah. And you know what's funny? Is that uh, I think Dave Chappelle made fun of Juicy Smollier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was like, got it. was he the one that said uh, he was out there trying to get a Subway sandwich two at in two in the morning in Chicago? Two in the morning yeah. in Chicago in the cold. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if we investigate that and we investigate Bubba, uh, what's Bubba Wallace? Yeah. Bubba Wallace's news. By the way, he I don't know when the last time he won a race, but can we send some people to investigate? Some of this shit. So instead, Giuliani got to go do it. Yeah. Who now has COVID, by the way. Puta madre, mas triste. And then his little ble- his little Beijing started running down the side <laughs> of his face. The AC was fucked up. And let's just make fun of that. And these are all the people that call me a coconut. They're like, oh, China, chingo, take your L. Why are you worried about China? And what do you mean he didn't say drink bleach? It's like, bro, I'm trying to help you. I'm telling you that the news is lying to you and to me. That's all I'm trying to do. Just consider it. Uh, it's a red pill tamale. You can eat a quarter of it, save the other half for later. Because I really want to talk about simulation theory and all this other shit. But first, I got to see if if you're going to be a little bit more doubtful of the news. Once, like what you were saying earlier, how do we help? How do we get some of our family members to be more open-minded and not just... Um, take all this stuff for face value. Like, no, pues el Trump dijo que nos tomaran los fabuloso y pues no, ese güey está loco y que la chinga. Dude, it's tough because uh, what, some of my closest family here, who most are from Mexico on my mother's side, are very low tech type people, only watch the news, might, don't even have like ca- uh, satellite or dishes, just like local news as well. So it's, al- it's almost tough because they don't have smartphones, they have flip phones still. They only watch, you know, Univision or whatever's on fucking TV. Uh, half of them don't speak English very well, if at all. And it's, it's like, that is the most uphill battle you could ever fucking face, you know? You could just hope at that point to live a, a, a well, prosperous, happy life with those family members because you're not really going to change your mind or anything. When they're also saying, en esta casa es puros democratas, that's it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. if you even say Trump or anything, and I, I'm, first of all, they're tiny people, they don't know English, right? So I'm a fucking mountain compared to these guys, and I always make jokes. These are people in your family? Yeah, these are my really close, like, cousins or whatever, mm-hmm. or even aunts and uncles. Mm-hmm. I'll just make jokes because they know, like, I'm a jokester as well, mm-hmm. but, like, j- I'm gently jabbing at, like, hey, maybe he's not so bad, maybe he's not so wrong, but they ain't having that. They don't know that they're on the side of Antifa. They're on the side of, like, take guns away, defund the police. Right. It's okay to burn shit down. That's They don't know that that's the side they chose. They, they chose the... Uh, he, she, they, men, yeah. in, men in dresses. And they don't know none of that shit either anyway. And and before we get into the Tupac quotes, yeah. um, while we're on the subject of raza and being gullible and being low information voters, I've also heard that within the raza raza, there's these like links and stuff that get shared via WhatsApp. So 
basically like some like anti-socialist stuff, like really some woke shit, like mm. some red pill, red pill pozole. Orale. You know what I'm saying? That somehow WhatsApp entre la raza, entre la comunidad. Yeah. Chingo bling, you forgot about your sangre. Oh, I posted a skit. It was uh, Mexican dads on Christmas be like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone said, it's just white dad for you now. You can't pay <laughs> a Mexican no more. I'm like, why? Because I didn't vote for the white man from Delaware. <laughs> oh, Scranton. Scranton. I'm from Scranton. I'm growing up in Scranton. Get your bitch ass up. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I think we uh, beat that dead horse up. We right? did, but, you know, I, and I'm sure we'll be beating more of these dead horses. Because actually, so today's the 7th. It's Monday the 7th. This will go up tonight. Most of you will catch it on Tuesday the 8th, which is the safe harbor deadline for a lot of you people that may not know. It's... Um, by federal law, the last day that states have to basically tie up any loose ends of any kind of litigation or any kind of anything that could contest electoral uh, votes in your state. And as we know, there's a lot of things going on in Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania being the main one where uh, we're seeing uh, there was a Justice Alito that actually pushed, th pushed it up to the Supreme Court as it is. And mm -hmm. You know, you're already hearing people that like, you know, why the safe harbor deadline is the last ditch effort for Trump's coup kind of shit, articles uh, like that. And again, we're going to have to beat some of these dead horses because shit ain't over until, as the Hodgkins would say, the large liberal with pink hair sings. Large <laughs> liberal with pink oh, hair. Oh, it's not over until <laughs> then. That's funny. Yeah, man. But uh, you had brought up also, interestingly enough, and I was it was at the tail end of the shit I was reading today, but Obama's remarks about why black dudes voted for Trump. Man, first, first Obama said, you know, Latinos, they, uh, you know, they, 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 he said they, they let their religion and some of the, some of that shit get in the way of the stuff that, you know, all the bad stuff that Trump was doing. And you know what I'm saying? It was like, hold on, bitch. You don't know why the fuck, you don't know why the fuck we voted for Trump. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't watch that. I want to watch that. So he's on a roll. Trump, I mean, uh, Obama's on a roll first. So just to contextualize what you're about to play. First, he literally critiqued why, why he thought some Latinos voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. But anyway, here he is. Saying, I don't actually don't have that queued up. I just had the article. Queued oh, up. okay. I thought you and I were gonna go over it because it, okay. it was it was kind of news to me too. So basically, I think Rob's about to read a, a part about Obama saying that um, the reason black men, the reason. He, here it is actually from him. Right, this is the, the so the headline was Barack Obama says black men voted for Donald Trump because he's a stereotypical macho figure and warns Democrats that they'll assume they always have to blow, 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 have the black vote, which I mean, Biden kind of said that, you know, Biden said, if you, if you don't know who to vote for, you're not black. Right. So so Obama said black men, because you got to remember. You got to remember, I think Obama, I mean, uh, Trump broke a record in how much uh, of the black vote mm -hmm. he got. And like some of the folks I listened to, they predicted that it was going to be black men that were going to vote for Trump. Because if you watch the DNC, the, the Democrat convention, if you watch a lot of their agenda, a lot of the stuff they're pushing, like even BLM turned into trans black lives matter. Like everything went female and gay with them everything went trans everything that the left was doing uh, um, because it, it became like a victimization olympics so out there in the protest it was always like if a black woman was the one like speaking it was like oh she's like head of the hierarchy like i'm the, speaking i'm speaking yeah exactly so and another headline actually was barack obama blames rap music for donald trump's increased support among the black male voters He's just mad, bro. He's just mad that Trump. So, so here's the point I was trying to make. Folks that I listened to predicted that it was going to be the black male vote that was going to lean towards Trump because they were going to snap and realize, wait a minute, all this shit that I'm seeing ain't about me. It wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like black men were going to say, all this stuff that I'm seeing coming out of the left has nothing to do with me. They're trying to please everybody else. And he also said that, like, in their music videos, in black music videos, they use a lot of reference to what makes Donald Trump successful. And funny enough, uh, for me, it was, I mean, Mac Miller, way back in the day when he released his, basically, Trump song, Trump shit, 
it was probably 2009, 10, something like that. Like that was kind of where, and I was at the time probably like 18, 19. Like, oh, who's this Donald Trump guy? Like, yeah, it's fucking millionaire, rich. Billionaire oh, you didn't guy. even, you didn't know who Trump was. Oh. Not when I was in high school. I mean, I think he probably oh, was already on Apprentice and that kind of stuff, but I didn't really uh, know this guy was a, a real estate mogul dude, and whatnot. When I was growing up, I read The Art of the Deal. I've Trump. actually, dude, that's on my list to get because I've been hearing so much about it lately. I was a kid, and the only reason I read it as a kid is because, like, in the 80s, I mean, you had, like, Mr. T, yeah, the A-Team. These were icons. You had Mr. T, the A-Team. You know, obviously, in, in the pop world, you had Michael Jackson, Madonna, Prince, and pop culture was like, you know, the movie Home Alone, like, Trump. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, it yeah, was, he was in Home Alone, duh. I think he was in Home Alone 2, and that, that might have been in the 90s. But but anyway, it was like Trump. He branded his name like it was a record label. Like, yeah. Trump. This shit was going to be gold-plated. Yep. It was going to be big fucking letters. And it, it was... It, I think I think Obama has a little bit of a point, in a way. Like, I think he's kind of right, because there is a big part of hip-hop that is uh, aspirational. Sure. I mean, look at Rockefeller Records. Mm. Why did Jay-Z and Damon Dash name their shit Rockefeller? You know, um, there's a lot of aspiration. Um, all the Bad Boy Records albums were shiny suits and we pulling Moet and stuff like that. That was like the Trump way. That's also the American way. Like, who doesn't want to come here and prosper and scale their businesses or have their whatever, or their their growth basically be endless? Like, Do that's, it big. Yeah, that's kind of the whole point of fucking being here, right? Coming from an oppressive country. like, And it's also funny, like, this kind of off-topic, on-subject, but people come here because it's great. They mm -hmm. don't stay, they don't risk their lives to come here. They don't risk anything to come here because it's better where they are, right? Yeah. Isn't that just common sense? Which reminds me of that uh, migrant caravan post- that I did. Well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, set, I set I set people up for the trap. I love anything that Simpsons related like that because it's so funny. I set people up for the trap. I said, um, "Does anybody know why the migrant caravans went to Tijuana instead of Tamaulipas?" And I said, "Tag a smart lefty," because I was trying to set a trap. Yeah, I'm trying to see, you know, the Shea Serranos of the world, like all these people that people look up to, and have them chime in, which you know they not, and and just to see, tag a smart lefty. Because these are the people y'all follow, right? Mm -hmm. Tag who these Latino celebrities or whoever and see if they know the answer. And they're going to miss the answer because they're going to assume that they're going to they're gonna take the mainstream media's narrative, which is the migrant caravans were all women and children and they just needed help and they're just all good people and Trump's an asshole, right? Right. But this that dude, Ed Calderon, was on Joe Rogan and he pretty much said, that he called it, he called it that the caravans were going to go to Tijuana instead of Tamaulipas, even though Tamaulipas was closer. There were so many reasons why everybody was like, bro, they're going to go through Matamoros Reynosa. They're not going to go through Tijuana. But he called it because he said, no, there's a lot of eighth, 18th Street gang members mixed in, people with different agendas mixed in, and they're going to tell the, the group, uh, all 10,000 of us need to go that way because we're y'all security and if we go that way it's gonna be smoke <laughs> it's gonna be a whole lot of beef if we go that way so th that type of shit's fascinating to me yeah people that can kind of see shit for what it really is and not just go with well the news said that these are all innocent people and that whole situation's fucked up because they keep finding these houses in Houston where they're having to rescue 30 people and shit that the Coyotes have. <laughs> I just send them to you and I'm like, man, I wonder if he's tired of getting these stories. No, 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 dude. I I literally had a, uh, I had lunch with my uh, my boy that's a sergeant. And I was like, hey, man, what's up with this? Th this happened in Katy. He's like, oh, it happens all the time. It's routine. He said, usually it'll be like a dude that will escape like in his drawers or something. I don't know if they keep them all in there naked or something so they don't run out. Somebody will find a way to escape and be like, Help, call the police. We're being held against our will. And then the cops got to come, surround the place, knock, knock, knock. Nobody opens, nobody opens. He has. Then they have to tell him, no one's going to get in trouble. He's like, finally, they might open a door. He's like, it's disgusting in there. They're all having to share, like, toothbrush and stuff. And he says, and unfortunately, we have to call INS, and they gotta, they're going to probably get deported. But at least they're not stuck uh, yeah. against their will by coyotes. Being probably uh, tortured to a, you know to an extent, that's fucking terrible. Yeah, fucked up. And it's right around the corner. It always happens around here.
people have know nothing about it. Um, what are the big? Were there any other big stories or topics we wanted to chat about today? Because we covered a lot of shit today. Yeah. Um, this is what I had on my list. They're doing fake news on Biden as well. We already covered that. Mm-hmm. Debunk the bleach hoax. Did that. Why are Latinos mostly low information voters? We kind of touched on that. Um, ideas spread like viruses. They do. They're contagious. Uh, so beware of that, right? I mean, like all these hoaxes. He called Nazis fine people because no one ever, no one ever countered that. No one ever fact checked it. No one ever stopped Biden. Be like, hey, dude, can you fucking don't make your whole fucking campaign trying to paint this guy as a Hitler? Can you talk about some real shit? What are you gonna do? Tell us about Second Amendment and fracking and the economy and and all that. And don't just like his Biden's whole um his whole COVID plan is basically plagiarizing what the fuck Trump's doing. Yeah, right. People love to say Trump has no plan. Biden has a plan. It's like, what's Biden's plan? Trump's plan. <laughs> and earlier, I meant to mention it when we were playing those videos from the fucking hoax or whatever, that they laughed at the time. This is back in April. And now here we are, December, and Operation Warp Speed is basically about to roll out and blah, blah, blah. Obviously, we can get into the, the vaccination conversation in another episode. That's a whole thing on its own. But it happened, right? In record time. Literally, this thing takes years usually to come up with, and it took months. Bro, I tweeted, what if we had a leader that listened to the experts. We wouldn't have this vaccine because when Trump said, we're going to do Operation Warp Speed, we're going to have a vaccine in record time. It's, they said it can't be done, but we're going to get it done, right? And everyone's like, no, it, it takes five years. You got to go through uh, phase one, phase two. All that red tape. Your trials, phase three. I mean, obviously, you got to have the red tape because you can't just go injecting everybody with some bullshit so it takes time. He was like, we ain't got time. We got to figure this shit out. He did Operation Warp Speed, all hands on deck. It's figured this shit out. And uh, imagine if we had Biden in these past four years. He would have said, I listen to experts. I listen to science. And they're telling me we need five years. Bruh. So let's end it with the Tupac quotes. Yeah, and because earlier we're talking about what Obama said, and there's a couple of good videos where they use a lot of Tupac quotes about stuff he had said about not having a dad or having it, you know, wanting a dad or a, a father figure. And some of the cool ones where, because we were talking about toxic masculinity the other episode too, and this comes up when they, they quote Tupac, but he said famously, like, your mother can't calm you down in the way a man can. You need a man to teach you how to be a man. And he's got a ton of a ton of quotes like that where he also says, like, we don't need more rappers, entertainers, basketball players. We need real mathematicians, scientists, men, you know, to do manly things, so on and so forth. And I don't really hear any of these quotes referenced enough, honestly. I think they rather use Tupac's quotes to be anti-Trump. Yeah. Like, basically, it's part of confirmation bias to find things that are going to back up what you're already wanting to think. People that say, you need to read, Chingo. Read. Chingo, Chingo, if you would just read the articles, it's like, I know what you're doing. You're just reading shit that's convenient to you so you can back up your little re- research paper. Right. And actually, in that Bloomberg uh, article that I was kind of referencing earlier from the CNBC rant, uh, they he wrote, he's uh, Santini, that Rick, that is, is ranting, also highlights a phenomenon psychologists call motivated reasoning, which is also similar to confirmation bias, which is what I was talking about. And... I mean, isn't that what everybody does for the most part, right? But Motivated it, reasoning? Motivated reasoning is what a phenomenon. F- what is that exactly? And or known as confirmation bias when you're just saying things that, you know, like early. Back up what yeah, you back up, Yeah, which is what we're talking about. But in this case, like it's a really, like you gotta, you're got you walking on eggshells because, you know, half of the people are saying, let's just for example say, open up businesses, open up people's lives, let them make their own choice. We are in America. And the other half is saying, lock it down, close them up, rely on the government. So it's like there's really no winning there. I mean, I don't know why they're not doing more comparison studies like, for example, Florida's wide open. Um, their economy's booming. Yes, they have cases, but California is completely locked down, have been locked down. Economy has gone to shit and they have cases. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, OK, so either way, you're going to have cases. <laughs> Either way, you're going to have cases. They actually use a, uh, a Florida representative, uh, and the, they quoted a tweet, who tweeted last week, and it's cases, OMG cases, all caps. That was his tweet. Like, yeah, cases, cases. That's all he tweeted, right? Who, who, who was that Florida representative? It was a, it was a Florida, uh, Anthony Sabatini. He's a Florida representative. So he was hating on Florida? 
No, he he is a rep. No, he's saying like, oh my god, we have cases. Like, yeah, there's cases everywhere, kind of thing. And th the more testing you do, the more cases you're gonna have. But and then you, like you were saying earlier, if you just kind of compare some of these places, why is it the places that are most locked down have just as many, if not more, cases as well? Well, here's another thing to compare. Are we just gonna talk about cases, or are we gonna talk about mortality rate? You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And then what variables play a role in that mortality rate? So, for example, age you know, diabetes, which is a big thing in the Latino community, which our Latino leaders have failed us. Not no one has tried to has tried to uh, be be more aggressive tackling diabetes, which is an epidemic entre la raza. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's what part of our diet. Is there something genetic? Todo that, el pan dulce. I know, but 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 even further than that, it's like depending on your your uh, your blood type or your how much indigenous blood you you're more used to maize oh for sure than flour because how we evolved or, or whatever so it's just you know like you were saying there's going to be cases at what point do we factor in okay how many of those cases resulted in deaths out of those deaths how many of those people were 95 years old with other conditions you see what i'm saying mm. so if you're if you're 21 and you're a waiter, can you go back to job? Can you go back to your job? Sure, you run a risk of bringing something home to grandma. You know what I'm saying? But how many of these young motherfuckers kick it with grandma? Anyway? Dude, I was just thinking <laughs> that to myself. Like they always use that reference or that example, and I'm like, man, how many people live with their grandparents? And yeah. we might be fucking talking out of our ass, and a lot of people do. But yeah. we're I just, mean, we're yeah. generalizing here. This is still entertainment. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom, uh, you know, she uh, she shares. A house with my my nephew and his daughter so you know my mom she's around I and mean, even my dad my dad came over mm -hmm. yesterday he came hide and see the girls and stuff so that's definitely a concern you know but at the same time we have to factor in like okay well maybe my parents don't need to be everywhere touching everything breathing on everybody but can somebody open up their business I don't remember who it was. This was actually a while back, but it just came to mind. Somebody had referenced or, or had said in an in a interview that take your parents, for example. Let's, let's use our parents and maybe everybody listening because you're probably in your 20, late 20s, 30s and beyond. Wouldn't you say that our parents, and I'm paraphrasing what I heard. Don't even remember who said it. Wouldn't you say that our parents would have done and would still do anything in their power to make sure that we lived a happy, healthy, and fulfilled life, right? Mm-hmm. So this person's argument was, don't you think that at this time when they've lived the majority of their life and done what they feel probably that their purpose is, that would they want us to do the same? Right. So the argument kind of was and it was kind of like one of those like, oh, it's kind of dark. But like the argument is like, yeah, they would want us to make sure that we're doing everything we can to live a long fulfilled life with our kids now, their grandchildren, instead of this predicament we're in where we're trying to, uh, you know, think of the elderly and think of all the older people only because we have to shut the world, the rest of the world mm -hmm. down because of it. So I think I think another part of the red pill besides, hey, guys, pay attention to the news and kind of maybe think about this, this show and what we talk about so that you can kind of maybe be like, oh, this. Wait a minute. That sounds like opinion. They're yeah. assigning us an opinion and I don't have to necessarily go by what this Don Lemon or whoever's telling me. Another thing is that I'm that I would like to plant the seed with people is this. Look at the state you live in, whether you live in Texas, Arizona, Illinois, Florida, California, New York, Indiana, wherever you live. If you're kind of new to all this like politics shit and this left versus right and this Republican versus, versus Democrat, blah, blah, blah. Pay attention to like what freedoms you have. Can you go to church? You know, are they telling you to wear a mask in your house in and keep it on in between bites? Are they telling you? to write down addresses of everyone that comes to your house and it's only six people. Like, <laughs> are you having to order the, tor the torta estilo Lori Lightfoot? I think that's another red pill is pay attention to your local government. In other words, are you in a red state or blue state? And I feel like now's the perfect time because all those little differences are accentuated. Like we have a Democrat mayor. We have a Democrat, uh, what's her name? County judge, uh, Lina Hidalgo, yeah. the lady that comes up with all the rules in terms of lockdowns and mandates. And, and then we have Mayor Sylvester Turner. He's all about social distancing, blah, blah, blah. But we have Governor Abbott, who's Republican, and he ain't going to let them just defund the police just because. So I think this is the perfect time 
to look at your state and be like, do I have a 10 p.m. curfew? Or do I need to be jealous of the next state next door? Like, do I need to move? Um, think about all that shit. Before we even get to talking about, you know, China and the fentanyl and, and the cartels and, big and, tech. and the border and, and big tech leans a certain way. And are they friendly with China? And before we talk about China and, and all that shit, at least pay attention to and let us know in, your, in the comments of at, at the what at what did he said the page and uh, maybe we'll get a forum or chat room popping on the Patreon. But let us know like, hey, what's up, guys listening from New York? Uh, you know, yes or no. We don't agree with Cuomo or, or, you know, let us know. Are you from Florida? Because I heard Florida, their economy is booming. Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> it is. Money is a major issue. Uh, that's a good point, actually, with the form thing. I'd mentioned that off air to, to Chingo. Uh, I know with Patreon, you can do like a, a Discord, and then if you aren't familiar with it, let's just pretend that back in the day when Chingo said he had a website where his forum, you know, his message board was popping, kind of like Joe Rogan had the Rogan board way back in the day uh, before he, you know, started podcasting. I remember being a part of that, just kind of lingering. See, it was kind of like Reddit before Reddit for me. Uh, we could do the similar thing for patrons, where we kind of set up a Discord and have all of the info and links and conversations kind of go down there in a sense where it's like a parlor meets Twitter meets ig but it's for people obviously that are signed up for the patreon and i do actually i'm pulling up the some i, I asked we're going to be recording a podcast maybe we can answer some of these questions at the end of the show if you're down to do a little rapid yeah, fire here let's do it let's see uh oh literally the first one i saw rob needs to be seen on youtube at the bottom. yeah we need to put i i have the camera and stuff but uh, i'm kind of waiting to to make sure that we hit our goal of our patrons our 500 patrons so that because i need another monitor so that when we watch videos we can pull it up they can see us watching it as well not just your reaction to the video the other camera and some other stuff you want to set up but that's that's in the works uh chingo uh chingo was ahead of his time when he rapped about white female privilege and white chick yep with my white chick yep <laughs> with my white chick that's funny classic shout out ed uh let's talk about sleepy joe work history uh bro ever knock some sense sleepy joe's work history there's actually a good video i'm gonna send you later uh, that, that somebody detailed like all of the history of basically like the Biden crime family that was really interesting. Oh, like the uh, when they were local government, when they were in Delaware and they had to deal with the credit card companies. Dude, all that stuff is kind of mm. chronologically like before the China stuff and, and his sister is his uh, daughter. All that stuff is in it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, people don't. They Most of the population is like, what are you talking? That's conspiracy, bro. I love how people are like, what about uh, Trump's uh, China account? And they've said several times, like, he closed it before he, you know, uh, took over office or whatever the fuck. But again, he's an f- investor. Yeah. And then they'll bring up, um, what about Ivanka Trump has, like, 19 patents in China? It's like, okay, China's a huge market. You know what I'm saying? They're a big player. They're a big country. Um, shit. Disney has a, a spot out there. But then again, Disney's very friendly with China. Mm-hmm. China has a lot of influence with Disney and the NBA and so on. But just because motherfucker does business over there, shit, I went to China. I was looking for a plug on some on some clothing manufacturing type shit. <laughs> Esos Clintons y los Holly Weird se andan robando y comiendo chamaquitos. A la madre. Damn. Yeah, that sounds a little conspiracy-ish, but you never know, man. From I didn't know all that pedophilia stuff was so rampant yeah there's a there's a island what was do you remember epstein's island what was it called uh was it like saint something it was so so there's an island very very close close to it uh that the biden family has land in that also is known for having an underground for a submarine basically like a submarine travel route to this uh, to epstein's island and uh just lane maxwell who ironically is out of the news completely is a pilot and a submarine uh whatever you call it pilot i guess as well she has she knows yeah how to do bro not too many people can fly a plane and drive a submarine and you saying the bidens have land on a nearby island yeah it was part of this thing that i watched it's either they have land or have investment property or something to, the, to that effect this is we've gone full foil here guys mm-hmm. but it's at the end of the podcast but the crazy thing is that alex jones from from my knowledge, he was one of the first people who was like, yeah, they have an island. There's, yeah. an island. There's a fuck island. <laughs> yeah. And they're taking kids over there. And it, it sounds fucking insane. It does. And it's like, what? No. No way. <laughs> what are you talking you know, like the Pizzagate stuff. People are like, yep. oh, let me, let me guess. You believe in Pizzagate? And I was like, no, not necessarily. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think there's literally 
a pizza restaurant in Washington, D.C., and they got kids in the basement. I don't literally believe that. But can people of power be fucking mañosos and exploit their plow- their power and exploit, like, poor, like, I don't know what the fuck they might be, poor kids whose parents, I don't know. It's all, yeah. They manipulate some shit. They, they fucking bring them in. Like, the way Epstein had them little girls, uh, he was out there trying to groom these, these little chicks and stuff from Florida, trying to teach them how to give massages and all this weird shit and paying them and luring them in to see if they can use them for these little honeypot traps where they would, like, have these priests and or people of power, these politicians, you know, coming in and setting them up. You know, I would argue to say maybe that this red pilling or maybe we'll call it the burgundy pill is just to have the ability to have your mind so open that anything like nothing is beyond the realm of possibility. It's the upside down world, man. Um, 100%. And going back to the Ed Calderon episode where he was talking about like all his dealings of having to kick doors for, you know, bus cartel members. And 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 when he was in that world, he was like. It, it's the under it's the upside down world like it's crazy some of the shit that like for example he said he had to resign from the whatever department he was in like the special forces police because when amlo i think it was when amlo got elected and it was a new regime and basically he said the left it was a leftist president he just wanted to blame everything on the prior administration all the conservative and so basically it was a new regime and what his bosses told him they're like hey man we're still gonna bust bad guys and cartel dudes but you know how there's two cartels fighting for territory right here in our area we're we're only gonna bust this one cartel we're gonna leave the other guys alone so he's like so you're basically telling me that we're all now working for cartel a because we're only attacking cartel b and they're like what it's one way to look at it. He's like, I'm out. <laughs> ah, he had to call his Marine homies to come. He resigned. He turned in all his shit. And they had to come help escort him and his family to bounce. And now he lives in America. Damn. And he does these tactical classes and shit. When are we, when are we going to go uh, do tactical training? I'm ready, dog. I'm ready. <laughs> we'll, we'll film it. For sure. Uh, where's the Red Pill Tamales merch? Uh, again, we're going to wait for them uh, patrons to come in. We're going to have exclusive stuff for patrons, and then maybe other people can, can get the whatever's left. We'll start brainstorming like some kind of cool quote. Yeah. Like, like pinche mainstream media me la pela, or something. <laughs> the Lori Lightfoot, uh, what did you call it? La, una torta, una torta. estilo Lori Lightfoot. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you discussed this yet, but The Great Reset. I, ha- I haven't brought it up. Have you read The Great Reset article? Explain it. I, no, nah, I don't want to do it. Okay, this needs its own. Time. Yeah, this needs its own its own fucking yeah. uh, portion of the podcast. We will bring that up, uh, but they also say, a.k.a. The New World Order. We can call it The New World Order, but again, that's going to be like a full foil type episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least many people would think. We're not saying that you think that. I- I'll rock the foil for the next episode. That's what's up. Uh, does anybody else think Rob sounds like the dude from Sunday Night Slow Jams? I don't even know what that is. Like, you got a radio voice, though. All right, I appreciate saying, that. Man. You got that R&B. I appreciate it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, based on what you've researched, what are your uh, what percent are you giving Trump of winning? And we've kind of touched on this, mm. but I don't know if you've actually thought that far mm. ahead. I like that they're speaking in terms of percentages. Yeah. For example, when people say, Chingo, you fucked up. You should have kept your mouth shut. You shouldn't have said nothing. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, your shit's over. I always tell them. Would you like to make a wager? Number one. <laughs> Number two, what is the percentage probability of that happening? You see what I'm saying? Because you got to factor in my desire to not want to go out of business. You got to factor in a lot of shit. But I like the fact that they're asking in percentages. So I'll just say oof, that's a really tough one. It man. is. And let, just be brutally honest because there's no wrong answer here. It's just like right now, honestly, like here we are the day okay. before a safe harbor. We have, uh, you know, the electors uh, meet are supposed to meet on the 14th. And then we have, you know, what's coming in January as well. Let's just say he has a 40 percent chance versus 60 percent, which is Biden's probably just going to fucking usher himself in along with the mainstream media covering for him because they may not have enough time to prove everything because the way let's just say the way they allegedly cheated is a lot of different people doing a lot of little stuff. So like everybody's playing a little role and like all those little things are like 
misdemeanors. <laughs> Some of them might add up to a felony. Uh, but when it all adds up, I mean, just the fact, just the fact that the mainstream media perpetuated these lies of he called Nazis fine people, he told you to drink bleach, and so on and so forth, that alone is kind of part of the cheating. That That is part of the steal. Like, they literally primed everyone to hate him. They set the table. They set the stage for this little old man, <laughs> this little old man and this chick that nobody liked. Like, she was up against 20 motherfuckers, and she dropped out. This little old man and this chick nobody liked. She called him a segregationist. She called him a me tooer. And they're fucking inching along the fucking winning line. Oh, president-elect with their fucking yellow background. Have you seen that bullshit background? Their, their stupid little set. It looks like it's a theater. Have you seen it? Where they're like, we're here. They're all spaced out. And it's like, president-elect Biden and Kamala's over there. Like, if you ever see them pan out, it think about it. Where are they broadcasting? Where are they doing all these videos from? The basement? <laughs> no, it's, it's literally... It's, I think it's ironic that it's a theater yeah, because it looks like a stage and they have those things set up and it looks like a theater to me, but I don't know where, like if it's in, probably in what, Delaware maybe? It's Grand. Because <laughs> it's near his house? Probably. But I mean, the whole political theater of everything that's going on is pretty mind blowing. At the very least, open your mind to just the theatrics of what's going on and it should lead you down the road of wanting to find out more. Yeah. I like, would think. Yeah, of course, man. If you ain't never seen House of Cards, I mean, think about it. There's definitely a swamp. There's definitely like D.C., Washington, D.C. used to be a place where, let's say Rob is a congressman from Houston. I, I'm a fucking some shit from somewhere else. Like everybody is supposed to be representing their constituents wherever they're from. And then you go to D.C. to make laws and shit, legislate some shit, and then you go back to your community. Now what D.C. is, you got Dr. Fauci about to serve under his seventh president. Fucking Pinocchio. Part of the swamp. like Can't even throw a baseball face ass. And Washington, D.C. wanting to maybe become its own little state or something. Uh, they're having their own identity now. You know, if they become a state and they turn Puerto Rico to a state, I know that's going to affect some shit. Um, not to mention that uh, next episode we'll talk about how Second Amendment might be up, might be uh, at play, at stake. In, depending on what happens in Georgia. Yeah, and we have some fans that are going boots on the ground, knocking on doors to talk about the Senate races in Georgia, which I'm, I'm hoping to get somebody uh, that's going to be a part of that, not necessarily a listener, but people that are actually involved with that whole campaigning uh, to talk about it. But yeah, you have a very good point about Second Amendment. And the toda Senate. la raza de Georgia que nos está watchando ahorita mismo. Un anuncio para toda la raza de Georgia. Les habla chingo bling. Si ustedes quieren tener pistolas, si todavía quieren el cohete, güey, ese es el Second Amendment. Estos vatos les quieren quitar ese derecho. Cuidado, al alba con el left, güey. El lado izquierdo, ese lado está cabrón, güey. Nomás mira lo que está pasando con el AMLO. Mira lo que está pasando en Venezuela, güey. Mira lo que pasó en Cuba, güey. Neta, ponte las pilas. Las pinches noticias, pura mentiras, güey. Mándame un WhatsApp. Ya nos vemos. Versace Mariachi in stores. That's, that's, my, that's my version of Boots that's, on the Ground. That's the first clip I'm making out of this podcast, even though it's at the end, the tail end of this. Toda la raza de Georgia. Póngase uh, trucha. Um, so your percent was, to go back to the question, was 40%. Yeah. I think that's a fair, I think that's a really good, and I would agree with you, honestly. I, I'd maybe, I, I don't know, 50 is what I would say, just because of what we've seen so far and the amount of Hail Marys this guy has thrown and still needs to throw and complete in order to have this happen is pretty crazy. It literally, Tim Pool called it lightning having to strike three times, but we're starting to see it inch towards the possibility of this fucking lightning striking three times. So well, we don't know, right? But 40, 50-ish, yeah. I think sounds fair enough. Uh, how do you think the Shade Room got all that election night info? I don't know much about that. I don't either. Election night info. I have no idea. Might have to do some research on that or send us uh, send us some info that you got. Uh, Democrats are more racist than people want to know or accept. I would 100% Very. agree. Very. Yeah. And, and I don't want to generalize because, I mean, I'm a lifelong Democrat. Sure. So I kind of just called myself racist. But I think maybe that sentiment goes towards when I get these white comments from these like white liberals that are like haha you're canceled or like yes you are a coconut and uh it's like hold on kenneth you know what i'm saying it's like wait a minute like is this your way of reminding me that i'm a brown man and i can't think for myself and i don't have the right to choose you know what i'm saying like i could see a fellow mexican telling me some shit i could see that 
Hold on, man. <laughs> you not, wait a minute. You can't call me no culture vulture, motherfucker. At the Molly King, how dare you? Yeah. Uh, we need to find a way to red pill boomers like my parents. And again, we kind of touched on that. Like, and I, and like I said, I feel like the first step is creating that distrust with the mainstream media. I mean, it's just little old Rob, little old Chingo sitting in the room broadcasting really kind of going up against the mainstream media. It's a huge multi, multi billion dollar conglomerate. It's okay for us to tell you to distrust them. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not, we're not a big network shitting on them. We're just trying to be helpful. That's right. I'm going to go, somebody said, I'm going to send this in a DM because it's so long. Oh, Jesus. A la verga. Yeah, uh, I, I promise I'll save this for another one because yeah. it's literally uh, long winded nine messages worth of reading, but we'll get to it. Uh, that was great questions, guys. Uh, Chinga, this is a fucking phenomenal episode. Cool, awesome, man. Yeah, I got to go do dinner with the fam, but uh, thank you, Rob, for holding it down, and thank you guys for listening, and tuning in. Versace Mariachi is out right now. You can get your copy along with some merch, chingobling.com. We have an album release party, San Antonio, Texas, December 10th at Hotel Discotheque. So many invited guests. I got Racheton come from L.A. The homie Tres represent Compton. He's coming in. That boy T and Dirtbag represent Houston coming in. My boy Fade Dog from San Antonio is going to be in the house. Queen of Crunk is hosting. DJ Rapper Rick in the mix. I'm performing. They're performing. It's going to be a great time. December 10th, San Antonio. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate all the love, all the patrons, and we're going to grow it. If you want it to keep going. Sign up on the Patreon. Just look up Red Pill Tamales. That's it. Sas. Se la lavan y se toman la agua. Cuídense.